Hello, warriors. Welcome to the Grace for Warrior podcast. Nobody is immune to this. It's called guilt. It's a heavy word, isn't it? It's like a shadow that seems to just follow us and haunt us everywhere. We keep putting tape, do not open over that skeleton closet. But it's a weight that seems to hold us back. What if I told you there's a way out? A divine path that leads us from guilt to grace. So yes, in this episode, we're going to explore how God's infinite, boundless love can heal our guilt, set us free. So sit back, open your hearts, and let's embark on this journey of healing and redemption together. Welcome to the Graceful Warrior, the podcast where grit meets grace and strength is matched with righteousness. Join us as we delve into the stories of those who navigate life's battles with poise and determination. Each episode is a new chapter in the quest to embrace challenges with an open heart and a steadfast spirit. So lace up the combat boots and let's embark on this journey together. This is The Graceful Warrior, where every battle is an opportunity to rise with grace. Well, hello. Welcome back to the show. Hey, how do you like the new intro? I have been working on that and was able to reconstruct my introduction and send it to the guys. And this is what they came up with. They've done the videos. And I just have a great, great team of guys that are with me. And um, my best friend, Jake, is the one that put all these videos together for me. And it's it's wonderful. I absolutely love it. So today we're going to explore how guilt can often hold us back. It creates barriers in our path to spiritual growth. But we're, don't be afraid. This is the part where there is a heavenly solution. We could discover how God's infinite grace can heal us. That's the podcast, The Graceful Warrior, right? It, the Lord will free us from the chains of guilt. And how do I know that? Because he did a lot of it with me in my heart. If you haven't heard my testimony, you can go back and look for the episode called Unconditional Love and listen to that one. And that is my entire testimony there of how the Lord freed me from guilt. So tune in to learn how to let go of your guilt and embrace the healing power of God's love, right? So I have a lot of notes. I actually sat down, mega notes. <laughs> so if I'm looking down today, I mean, it's, I sat down, I did all these notes and uh, today I'm recording them on a Tuesday. I actually sat over at the car dealership while studying because my car needed to get fixed. So I said, I'm taking everything out of my office. I'm going to go down there and I'm just going to study. So I didn't have time to like put it to memory, to practice, 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 like I normally do, normally do. And then I just come on here and just talk to you. So um, I want to look at some, some things in this episode of guilt. I want to actually look at what is guilt, who is guilty, the depth of guilt, and how it like actually impacts our lives, you know, and how does guilt hold us back? And what's the answer? What is the path to freedom, right? And so when I started deep diving into this, and I looked at it from a biblical perspective, because that's the only true answer that we actually need. I found that guilt, I found that, here's a definition of guilt. Guilt means to violate a law or rule. We violate moral rules. We can violate ethical rules. We can violate biblical rules, right? There, God says that there's nobody without sin. There's nobody perfect on this earth. We, as mankind, are all guilty of sin. 
That's the thing. It, it, we are guilty of sin. And you're just like, wait a minute. How can I be guilty of, of sin when I try to live a good life? Well, we're born into sin. You know, there, there's nobody perfect. Um, it's, it's the word of God. It says that nobody is perfect when we come in. Um, and it's the same way we, we seem to sin less as we grow in Christ, but we are born into sin. And let's look up some scripture here. My first um, scripture, I want to go to uh, Romans. And um, if you're listening and driving, I hope you get there safely. And if you're following along on the computer, I see. I, first of all, let me just say this while we're looking this up. If you're grabbing your Bibles and say, I want to follow along, I'll give you a minute. You know, as I have been noticing, everybody that has been listening over there in, in Kenya, Africa, and I want to say hello, Kenya, Africa. Hello, Karen. And um, hello, Emily. And I want to say hello to the United States. I thank you, Virginia. I still see you. Um, I thank you that you are listening to this podcast. And it is so amazing to see all of you over there on Amazon, on Apple, on Spotify. I see the numbers going. And I just want to say welcome to the podcast. Welcome, St. Mary's. I see some of you on here. So listening to this, I see the analytics. So welcome, St. Mary's, to the podcast. All right. So um, let's go. So if you have your Bibles, let's go over to Romans uh, chapter three. And we're going to read two verses. Romans chapter three, verse 10. This is our answer to guilt and the Lord's answer to, are we ever without sin? As it is written, I'm reading from the New King James Version. There is none righteous. No, not one. Let's go to verse 11. It says, there is none who understand. There is none who seeks after God. Verse 12, they have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. So there's our answer about, well, wait a minute. I, I don't do bad things. I'm good. Goodness doesn't get us to heaven. Our goodness is as filthy rags to the Lord. And let's, let's look at another one. Verse 23 says this, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So right there, it's, you know, we come into this world. We, we learn of Jesus. Jesus isn't in our hearts the moment that we are born. So we are without the king. We, we are born in a sinful nature. We can't help that. Adam messed that up. <laughs> Sorry. You know, Adam messed that part up. So no one is, is actually perfect, right? Okay. All right. So there is the definition of guilt for all have sinned. There's nobody perfect. Everybody has broken the law, whether it's your morals, whether it's eth ethical and whether it's biblical, we've all broken it. There's, there's nobody perfect. All right. As much as we try, we could try, but it's not going to do us any good. There's an answer to to this guilt that we carry. All right. So the depths of the guilt, let's sit there and discuss the depth of this guilt and the impact of it on our lives. And I want to show you something that I thought was pretty amazing. And I want to take you over right away to um, Isaiah. Um, it is towards the middle of your Bible, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalms, Sol Solomon, Isaiah. So if that helps at all, right? Okay, so um, Isaiah, and I want to go to chapter, I'm going to lift this up a little bit, chapter 66. And um, 
This is the depth of our guilt. This is the impact that it has on our lives. And normally, I mark all these so I could just flip through, but I was at the dealership. I had to come home. I had to get everything situated back in the office and then sit down and do this for you. So if I seem a little scatterbrained, I apologize for that. Um, I will do better the next episode. All right. So give me grace. Okay. All right. So Isaiah verse or chapter 66, verse two, it says for all those things, my hand has made and all the things exist, says the Lord. But on this one, will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. And you're like, okay, Monica, what does this actually mean? Well, I'm going to explain. Let's go. Um, when I looked at this, I was like, contrite heart. What does that actually mean? Does it, does it apply to us? Does it apply to this whole thing of being with guilt? Check this out. This is what I found out on this. God sees a contrite heart as a broken heart. This is where the true depth of guilt is. When we have a contrite heart, the impact of it is a heavy burden that we cannot get rid of on our own. No, it's a burden. Have you ever, if you go back and you remember to when you actually gave your life to the Lord, and you knew, I mean, even for me, when I knew I couldn't do it anymore, the weight and the burden of my sin was on my shoulders. And I knew that I was guilty. I knew that I was wrong. There was nothing that I could do. I might as well have entered my guilty plea, which was guilty, right? I came to that moment where I had a broken heart, broken spirit. I knew I was guilty. There was no denying it. And so this is where God loves to step in. This is where the true depth of our guilt is. The impact is that heavy burden of our sin, and it's unbearable. We, we can't carry it. We, we don't know what to do. We're broken. All right. That is the depth of our guilt. All right. And then I look this up, and I'm going to read this from my notes. According to the International Bible Encyclopedia, it, it, it even says this, a contrite heart is one in which the natural pride and self-sufficiency have been completely humbled by the consciousness of one's guilt or the knowledge of one's guilt. And then this is interesting. In the Hebrew and the Greek, when they often translate the word contrite, it actually means crushed or crippled or a broken heart. Wow. God knew what he was talking about when he talked about a contrite heart, right? So now let's put this all together in what we've just learned about what a contrite heart is, the heavy burden or the, the depth of the impact that we have, right? We get the picture of a conscience that is crushed by the weight of its own guilt. That's when we stop justifying our wrong choices and our sin. We actually understand. We carry the guilt. We are crushed. It is a burden that we go, wow, I really have a messed up past. I see all the things that I have done wrong. Our guilt or our self actually agrees now and sees that God is right in his justification of judgment that he can pass down on us and does if we don't accept him. And so here it is, a guilty heart will throw itself upon the mercy of God, knowing it deserves nothing less than death or God's righteous judgment. All right. So I want to look up, um, I think I skipped one guys. Um, Let's look up this, Psalms 51, 17. And I was just amazed at all of this. And I was like, wow, Lord, you know, you have really, you created 
such, you could take a word and, and you can do a deep Bible study on this and God continues to speak to you. And you're like, for those that say, I never hear God. You've got to get into the word and let him speak to you. Look up things. What does contrite mean? What does repentance mean? What is this sanctification? That's how he speaks to you. And then that's how you will get to understand who God is because he speaks through his word. He never speaks outside of his word. It's always because the word is him, right? Okay, so Psalms 51 and it's verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. There it is again. These, O oh God, you will not despise. See, God loves a contrite heart because that's where he knows that he can come in and say, but wait. And he can tap you on the shoulder. And as you turn and look, he says, but come to me. And I could fix all that. I can heal that broken heart. I could take away all that guilt. You don't have to carry it anymore. You don't have to carry the shame anymore. And then that's where God comes in and does the changing within, right? So how does guilt actually hold us back? And I've looked at this and I think we tend to we tend to weigh out the heaviness of our wrongdoings. You know, like murder is worse than stealing a car because you took a life, right? So we tend to weigh out our sin. And then we end up saying, well, God can't possibly forgive me of that because that was that was a bad thing that I did. You know, and, and you're like, no, sin is sin to God's eyes. He doesn't say that murder is worse than stealing a candy bar. He doesn't say that that killing a person is worse than a lying tongue. Sin is sin. That's it. There, he doesn't put them on a scale. It is all wickedness. It's evil and it's sin to him, period. Man, we do that. We weigh them out. And that, that's why we say, oh, well, he shouldn't go to jail because he stole the car. But you know, the guy that actually killed the woman, he should go to jail for life. We weigh him out. Does that make sense? And so um, we end up saying that our sin, that we, we, we hold it in our hearts and that we allow our lives to be held back by sin. That's what we do. And we end up saying that, well, this is unforgivable. It's unforgivable because the one that holds that and allows themselves to be held back, they haven't forgiven themselves. And that's the thing about guilt is that we don't let go and we have to allow ourselves to heal and forgive our own self of messing up. And it took me a long time to learn that as I was going through and, and learning about God's mercy and learning that God can put my heart all back together. And I had to look at it and go, I actually have to let go of these things that have caused me such a heartache that I look at and I go, well, God can't possibly forgive me of that one. I've had to let go of those things in my heart. When we give our lives to the Lord, we have to let go and go, you know, it's almost like this. And even if you have to do that, if you have to write, get a piece of paper, Write everything that you have done in your life that you can think of. Or maybe it's just those things that really hold you back, like we're talking about today. Those things that you don't allow yourself to heal. The shame, the guilt, even if it's something that has happened to you. I have been raped in the military. It was hard to let go of that. It was hard to even forgive them of the wrong they did, they did towards me. And if you have to write those things down and go out in the fire pit, even the barbecue, or if you have to, throw some lighter fluid on and say, Lord, I let it go to you and light it on fire. It's, a, it's the action for you to see it and go on, I'm letting this go. If you have to do that, do it. 
You know, if you if you have to write it all down of the things that are holding you back from moving forward with the Lord, and you have to write it all down, go go write it. Even if you have to write all your emotions down and what you feel. Remember the episode of the the gal that did the 500 mile walk across Spain and she wrote how wrote down how she forgave her ex for the hurt. She did that. And then she buried it. She she left it there at the cross over there in Spain. And it's the act of it's if you have to physically do something to say, I've got to let this go and not allow the sin to hold you back in your life. You can do that as long as you give it to the Lord. That's the only way you can have your freedom is by giving it to the Lord and allowing him to take it. And he puts his hand out to you and he says, give it to me. And when you put it on his hand, he takes that and he puts that on his shoulders. And then he turns around and he says, now I'm going to give you this. Here is my yoke and my yoke is light. All I ask is that you obey me and let me disciple you. Let me heal you. See the difference? So we, we tend to allow our shame to keep us back from moving forward in our walk with the Lord. When we allow our shame and guilt to hold us back, next thing you know, we're not going to church. And we don't want to get involved with anything because our guilt it's such a burden. We don't need to. And the enemy will do that. The enemy will come and go, you don't, you're not worthy enough. You shouldn't be hanging out with these people because you're not worthy enough. These are Christians. You're not. You drink. You smoke. You watch what you shouldn't be watching on TV. You see how the enemy does that? And he will come compound, compound, compound all of these thoughts into your head until next thing you know, you are in your house and you just go, yep, I might as well accept it. That's what the enemy does. He's seeking whom he can devour and destroy. And he will use shame and guilt to do that to us. We begin the lie, then we say that we're not worthy of God's love. Then it could come to the point of taking one's life. And that's ultimately what Satan wants to do. But there's an answer. Here is where we can learn to be forgiven. See, before, we, before salvation, we lived under the yoke of bondage. And the yoke of bondage is like, like almost like saying the burden of bondage. Um, in Galatians, let's go over, let's go over to Galatians. Let's see if this helps with, with the explanation. Um, Galatians is in the New Testament, and it's Galatians chapter four, and it's verse three. And it says, Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, the sin of the world, right? Your, your your shame, your guilt. Verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. So here comes the answer. Here comes the freedom of being free from the bondage of guilt, the bondage of shame. We can let it go. We can give it to the Lord, right? But let's do this. Let's go over to my favorite chapter and let's go over to um, Romans. Let's go back to Romans. I know we were there a while ago, but now I want to just, I want to just encourage you. If you have shame, if you have guilt, that it can be overcome. God can free you from this. You are extended grace by the Lord. And he'll free you from all of that. There is healing. There is redemption. And so I want to take a quick break and then we're going to go over 
what is the freedom that God offers us in Christ. All right, so we will be back right after this. Hello, Graceful Warriors. Are you ready to dive deep into the Word with God? Well, look no further. Join the spiritual journey on the Graceful Warrior podcast. It's your faithful companion on this incredible adventure. As a Christian-based show, we're here to help you armor up spiritually. Well, what's in it for you? Early access. Be the first to listen to our inspiring episodes and bonus studies. Delve into deeper insights and reflections. We also have live streaming and chatting. You're able to connect with fellow warriors in real time. And last but not least, we have merchandise coming soon where you could wear your faith and help support the show proudly. And if you say, hey, I'm in, how do I sign up? Go well, down below in the show notes where it says how to find me and all the different links on where you can find this podcast. Go to number nine on that list, click that link and hit membership. You have all three different tiers there that you can sign up. Hey, thanks for listening. Have a blessed day. All right, so I want to go back to uh, Romans chapter 8, and it's verse um, 1 and 2, all right? And it says, um, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak from the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness, the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. And so I want to stop right there and say, in Romans, Paul is saying right here that there is no condemnation. There is no guilt. There is no shame. If to those who are in Christ Jesus, you are free, but oftentimes we won't let go. And that's what I was saying is you have to let go of the guilt and the shame. You have to leave it at the foot of the cross. And you're like, well, Monica, I don't, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've been through. You know, I could say the same thing. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've done. And that's where we're, we start weighing out our sin. You have to leave it at the foot of the cross. You have to let go of that guilt. You have to open that hand and say, Lord, take it and you will be free. All right. So let's take a look um, at verse uh, three through four. And it says, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did. Right. We just read that. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Right. And, um, and then I want to read verse five. It says, for those who live according to the flesh, they set their minds on things according to the flesh. That's where we are when we start looking at our guilt and our shame. We start thinking about it. I'm bad. I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm still holding on to this. I haven't forgiven myself. We start thinking like that. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, we, th we need to think about the fact of when Satan tries to come in and said, do you remember that? Remember that sin that you did back in your past? Remember how you used to do that? Remember how this and that? Well, see, God can forgive you for that. You still hold on to it. You still want to do it. And he starts feeding all these thoughts into your head. But if you walk in the spirit, then you'll think in the spirit and you'll know how to go. You know what? I nailed that one to the cross when I gave my life to the Lord. Jesus took that. I gave it to him and he took it and forgave me of all of that. I have no, no sin. What does Paul say? That there is now for no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's you and me. And if you're not right with the Lord, you can get right with the Lord. 
He can forgive you of all of your sin. If your heart is broken and you know that your past is, is not good and your life is not good now, he will forgive you. And all you have to do is just say, here, here's my life. Here's my contrite heart, that broken heart. And ask him to forgive you of your past. And watch what he does. And you're like, well, how do you know? I know because he did that with me. He did that to my heart. He healed my heart. I had a broken heart. And I had a heart that was full of pain. It was full of anger. And he healed my heart. So I know that he can do it for you. Because he did it for me. So the Christian life is characterized by a joyful freedom. To follow Christ out of love. That's what you get in return. You're free from slavery. It's, it's death to life. See, we are bond in bondage to sin. We continue to do those things. Paul says, you know, that even the flesh, our, our sinful nature, it wants to continue to do those things that we shouldn't. And um, so that's a whole other study, right? It's the things that we don't want to do, our spirit nature doesn't want to do, our flesh wants to do. And what our spirit wants to do, our flesh wants to fight it. That's why it's hard to get up early in the morning to pray. Our flesh doesn't want to do it. It wants to sleep in under the warm covers. But our spirit wants to be with the Lord. It cries out. It yearns for his presence. It yearns for, to praise him. It yearns for the word of God. It's hard to get up and go to church because we it's the weekend. We want to sleep in. you know. But our spirit wants to go. Our spirit man. You know, when when you, you, everybody is inviting you to to a movie and it's a movie that you shouldn't watch and your your flesh wants to go because you're like, oh, I want to see that. But your spirit is saying, no, that's not good for you. So see the battle. It's a battle all the time. We will we will deal with it until we go to heaven. And you're like, well, Monica, how how do we it's a battle. Then why even go through that? Because great is your reward is, is in heaven, right? I'm stumbling over my words today. Your reward is great in heaven. And your reward of being obedient to the Lord and following him and going, no, I don't do that anymore, Satan. You know, calling those people to say, I'm sorry, thank you for the invite, but I don't go watch those movies anymore. No, I don't drink anymore. No, I don't smoke anymore. And standing up and saying, Lord, I did it, right? And not feeling guilty, not feeling shame about it. But you did what was right according to the Lord. And in every aspect, that's just an example, right? So he takes our guilt, he puts it on his shoulders, and he gives us his yoke. All right, so I want to end it with this. I want to go over to um, Matthew. <clears throat> <clears throat> Matthew chapter uh, 11. And we're going over to, I believe it's verse 29. Yes. So Matthew 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And you're like, Monica, what is lowly in life? Well, let's look it up. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty nine says that we're going to go over to um, Philippians 2, 5. So let's do it. All right. Let's go over to Philippians 2, 9. And let's find out what the Lord is saying about he is lowly in life. What did I say? Philippians 2, 9. Is that what I said? 2, 5. Right. All right. Philippians 2, 5 says this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Hmm. Interesting. Humility, lowly in life. Humility, right? That's what it means. 
All right, so let's go back to Matthew 11 and go to verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right? So see, if we can let go of the guilt and the shame, then God will take that. He will heal us. And we will be free from all of that. On our journey from guilt to grace, we've explored how guilt can be a barrier to our spiritual growth, but also how God's love can heal us and free us. Remember, warriors, guilt is not a life sentence, only in the natural world when you are truly guilty of something, right? It's a sign that we are human, that we are capable of growth and change. And with, with God's grace, we can overcome it. So let's carry this message of hope and healing into our daily lives. And let's remember to extend the same grace to others that God extends to us. Thank you for joining us on this journey. And I hope that you found this episode to be encouraging, giving you a fresh perspective. And if you have, hit the like, subscribe, follow, and share it with your friends and family. Stay blessed and stay guilt-free. And with that, remember to always lace up your combat boots. It's a battlefield out there. you got to be able to lace them up and walk in faith and confidence. And, but, and not by sight. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, have a blessed day. And that's a wrap for today's episode of The Graceful Warrior. Thank you for joining us in the arena where grit meets grace. Remember, every challenge is an opportunity to wield the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll continue to explore the battles and victories that shape our lives. If you've enjoyed the journey, please subscribe and leave us a review. Until next time, keep contending for the faith through grace and grit.